Well, don't go anywhere, because, uh, boom, I got an AOK to open. Oh, nice. Yeah, it came uh, in the coffee. So, uh, honestly, he told me he was going to send me some coffee, and these are not bagged and boarded. So, I don't even know what they are. Here. They uh, they very well might be uh, just his books, but either way, he's an amazing writer. It's cool. I, I got this knife just out of reach, like always, right? Oh, my God. Is that why your kids always stay quiet? Yeah. Okay. It, it's for a comic vet, you know. He says like every American oh, has a <laughs> six inch blade just out of reach. Has a sword handy. <laughs> right. I was like, what's the biggest knife I have? I'm looking forward to Sunday getting to chat it up with him. That's always a blast. Gold bladed and everything. Oh, you must have got that from DJ <laughs> Lynch's kitchen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Walked right in and grabbed it. Nobody said nothing. Yeah. At least not after you had it in your hand. <laughs> right? <laughs> They're like, uh, you you're go. good. <laughs> Do you? Ooh. Jason said hmm. that's a serial killer knife. Let's see. I don't know what what's in here, so let's find out. <gasps> the negatives. Boom. Yeah, so it is his books. Awesome. This is, uh, probably can't see it, but written by Rick Quinn. I interviewed him some time ago, and uh, um, dude is, I mean, probably one of my favorite writers. Like, I think he's part of the next wave of creatives that are going to take over the business. Ooh, earworm, nice. But that artwork is amazing. Yeah, this is... Uh, one of his books as well and it has some very cool artwork i talk about something in here quite a bit yeah so like the whole thing is like this guy he's like a detective and he has this song stuck in his head and so they have this machine that can see noise and so he is a detective and he's following the trail of an earworm and it looks awesome very cool so this is a cool book. I like this one. Boom. <gasps> okay, this book right here, Chameleons. I love this book. Rick Quinn, what I like about him so much is, like, he knows how, like, he writes in silence, you know. There's very little dialogue, minimal dialogue, but he knows how to use the artwork and the environment to his benefit. And so there's just, like, it reminds me a lot of... Uh, no Country for Old Men. Oh, such a great movie. Yeah, you know how like there's just like no background, no score, nothing like mm -hmm. just big wide open shots where like there's this weird tension building because there's nothing going on around you and stuff. He kind of does that a lot with uh, in Chameleons here. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, I really like the way he writes because he thinks about silence and lack of dialogue as a tool instead of like something that needs to be filled in, you know. I guess the way an artist can be into like negative space, he does that with uh, his writing. That's pretty wild. I've never even heard of or thought of that concept before. Yeah. The ghost butterfly. This was a cool one. It's about a guy in a post-apocalyptic world, like basically looking for his uh, wife who is probably dead because there's radiation everywhere. Mm, bummer. Have you read Geiger yet? Just made me, that comment just made uh -huh. me think of that. No, I still haven't read it. Okay. This one, kind of hard to read, but it's called Saltwater. It's a really cool book about, like, he kind of wanted to do, like, this, when he got with the artist, they wanted to do, like, this Star Wars kind of inspired thing. And so it ends up being, like, basically, like, a political element of of Star Wars. And essentially, like, all the, the wealthy and special people live above the water and then there's like this whole like underground section of the it, it almost reminds me of like water world or something oh uh, i love like movie. this i don't know why it's horrible. oh yeah i grew up on it it was terrible mm. <laughs> but i love it so Dead uh Popper. yeah there, it's like this political thing of like rich and poor it's a cool story though the dead sparrow another wick rick quinn classic and this oh, one right how here. How long have these books been out? Uh, I mean, oh, that looks really been, cool. 
I don't know the exact dates on them all, but he's been publishing for a couple of years now. But it's all like independently financed and self-publishing and stuff. And uh, he works with a couple of people. Like he kind of has like a group that he works with, you know, they exchange ideas and stuff. And they're all starting to kind of hit, you know, like they're getting picked up. Um, like uh, Aditya Bidikar. I don't know if you remember him. He's the letterer for uh, Department of Truth and a lot of other big books right now. I'll be honest with you. I don't, I don't know too many letterers by name. I know that you follow that podcast. What's it called? With the letters. You, you've talked to me about it oh, before. Oh, uh, Letters and Lines. Yeah, Letters and Lines. Yeah. This is uh, Hassan. I don't know how to say it. Hassan Atsmain. Elahu, Elhu. Mm. He uh he's also a, a letterer that's doing a lot of work right now. But he um he also has a great podcast. But he does something called uh strip panel naked and he has an awesome like kind of like comic industry magazine that he does every so often called um, I forget what it's called now. Maybe seeds or something like that. I don't know. He's one of those people like, you know how they talk about like a comedian's comedian? Well, yeah. Son is kind of like an industry guy. Like all of the biggest people in the industry like know this guy very well. He's uh, very well uh, regarded. So um, he worked with Milton Lawson, who recently had Detective Heller uh, mm -hmm. kind of blow up. That was a pretty good run. Um mm -hmm. And he's got a couple of other one, uh, other people that he works with. Oh, Dave Chisholm that I did the interview with. He worked with him on a lot of stuff. So all the people around him are really starting to kind of blow up right now. And uh, I expect to see – and they always go back to him. They're like, oh, yeah, Rick is amazing. It's like, you're the one that's published, though. <laughs> but it's because people literally don't know how good Rick is. Like, his writing is <sighs> chef's kiss. <laughs> 